Well, the mindset is you just can't be satisfied for what just happened. I mean, you got to hunger for more. I mean, we should be, you know, and we talked about being a hungry team, you know, when uh, at the end of spring practice, because, you know, we got to start all over again, you know. Um, that's our approach. Uh, and starting all over and in, in creating the, uh, the desire and the attitude that, you know, we have to prove ourselves again. You know, we have to do well on the road. We have to play well at home, you know, when the games we're supposed to. So, um, you know, there's no uh, delusions of grandeur about who we are, what we are. It's just that, uh, you know, we're, we're a team that uh, hopefully that, are, that that's, that's rising to and, and rising to the level of abilities that going to help us continue to be, as David mentioned, in those bowl games, help us compete for perhaps uh, a chance to play, you know, in our conference for conference championships. It's an exciting year for us. Um, you know, we're not going to sneak up on anybody. Um, our young players are excited to play. The guys that are coming back are excited to play. And, and um, we talk about it all the time. It's where you end in the end of the season instead of the beginning. So I won't let anybody read that. It's, you know, it's very important. You know, you look at our schedule. Schedule is tough. I mean, it's, it's challenging. I mean, it's, um, you know, uh, some of the road games, you know, particularly TCU and La Tech and, you know, Georgia Tech, you know, very soon, you know, after we, we, we play here. And, um, but it is, it is what it is. That's the schedule that we have. But it's important, that, and I've, I've said to the players, <laughs> that one of the things that's consistent is you see teams that have gone to bowl games consistently is that they're, they tend to be pretty good teams year in, year out, because you have those extra practices. You know, those young guys that didn't play during the season, they get chances to, you know, to, to, to play in practice and get more reps and and I think that for us to continue moving forward in a positive direction, putting ourselves in a position to uh, to be considered for bowl game opportunities would be important for the development, continued development of of a team that's uh, you know still you know fairly young. It, it, it's uh, when you look at our secondary now, you, you know obviously you miss Rodney McLeod, who's a you know great player for us in NFL camp. You know Chase Minifield. Um, you look at Trey Nicholson now, who'll be a true sophomore, will be kind of the veteran of the group. Uh, but I, I feel really, we feel really good about uh, Brandon Phelps, um, Draquan Hosky, you know, um, Anthony Harris. I mean, those are all candidates, guys that played last year in their special teams roles, their full phase special teams role. They played in college football games. You know, they didn't get, they were like third team or backups to some guys that were playing, you know, in every down situations. But now, our team is at a point now where those guys that played, I think we were seventh in the country last year with uh, the amount of true freshmen playing, they got a lot of special teams experience. They had some reps in games. Now those guys are going to be the guys that have to play the scrimmage plays, have to play the first, you know, first and third down nickel packages, have to play, you know, fourth down situations. So we're at that point back there in the back end there with, uh, with, those, uh, with those players that are playing. But we're, you know, again, I think talent-wise, you know, they have the skill and the talent-wise to do it. It's just what's missing is the experience of playing, you know, defensive back, you know, uh, you know, in a, in a game, and uh, they'll get it early on. And uh, you know, I'm sure that uh, that'll be something that we'll be paying close attention to. I think uh, what I am excited about is that uh, Billy Shots is back. He was one of those guys. If you remember, broke his, uh, his his lower leg in the Florida State game. He's back. He's 100%. He's stronger. He's faster. He's ready to go. Uh, you know, Asar Walcott. You know, when we talked a couple years ago. The safety move to linebacker, linebacker to defensive end. He is. Uh, this is his last year. He's healthy. He's ready to go. Um, you know, Jake Jake Snyder. So I think that uh, obviously a lot of these incoming freshmen have a skill level and a talent that you know spoke to their abilities playing high school. It's always that next level jump when you you know you have to rush against the you know, probably a fifth year or senior offensive lineman that, you know, how well you could do that. But there is a skill set that that Eli has, that Michael Moore has, that, you know, that these guys that are here now that they have that we're going to try to find out early, you know, what they can do, you know, what they're limited to. And, and I think if you look at our team, we probably have more skill position guys, DB, wide receiver, safeties that have a quicker opportunity to play than say uh, uh, you know a down guy, an inside guy, because the, I've, I've said all you know people say, and I've said that the biggest difference is just the the, the strength level, you know, of uh, of when you bring a lineman in or offensive lineman or defensive tackle. So I think there'll probably be more skilled guys that have a chance to play, make an immediate impact, you know, with this team this year, 
than, uh, than some of those interior guys. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll find that out again soon. No, you know, uh, Michael and David both knew, you know, I've talked about this before, both knew that, uh, that when it became official that uh, Philip had an opportunity to come here and enroll and, and perhaps play right away. Um, they, they knew that. And I think, uh, you know, thank goodness for the maturity level that both of them have and possess. I mean, going on to, you know, having played in a college football game and being around their team and knowing our system um, and, they're be and being great teammates, they just, they, they just said, hey, listen, if, if Philip is going to make us better, then, uh, then we welcome him. Uh, but we're also competitive. We also understand that, you know, that, uh, you know, that, that we, want to, we want to have these opportunities to, be, to play in games. And, and I think their maturity level put them to another point in their career where they've become leaders. You know, they've been in college football games and, and they have a voice that they can speak up. And uh, they just said we, we embrace the opportunity for Philip to come because that's going to increase the, uh, the competition. And the competition should make, uh, you know, should make not only them better, but the competition at the, you know, the right guard position or the, or the corner position, whatever it might be, is going to make those guys better. And they embrace that. And that's where they are in this part of their career now. It, it's too hard to tell right now, you know, with Sunday being, uh, Monday being our first practice, uh, you know, the first opportunity to see, you know, how well, you know, both Michael and David have improved, to see where Phillip is in terms of his skill. I mean, you have to understand that Philip came to, to, to school, got right into to, uh, you know, to summer school, taking classes. Um, you know, we weren't allowed to, to assess his athletic ability, you know, in any way. And, and, uh, but we, we could keep tabs on him from an academic standpoint. And um, we know he's very capable academically. He, he, he's proven that with the grades that he's gotten in the summer school. But now, you know, Monday will be the first opportunity for us to assess, you know, where he is. And I would say, Mike, by, you know, hopefully, you know, a couple practices or as we start planning is to, is to where he is, to where his knowledge, his skill level is. And um, the biggest thing with our quarterbacks is uh, the decision-making opportunities and abilities. <coughs> and that's, that's always a key thing. We just have to see, you know, where Phillip is and learning our scheme, our concepts, our terminology and all that. We, we always spend a lot of time scripting these early practices, not only how the practice format will go, but for me, I always work hard to, to uh, get just the right rep for just the right quarterback, making sure everyone gets the, the uh, equal, op not equal opportunities, but everyone gets opportunities at all the different concepts. Uh, sometimes when you're scripting ahead, you, you're, you're guessing how well a guy will handle it because as you go through a couple practices, you watch the film, the video after practice, you say, hey, I got to get David another rep at this, or Michael needs another rep. And so you don't always know how, how they're going to perform going in, uh, but, but I spend a lot of time uh, in every year trying to figure that out. And so last year we had a different issue, trying to make it more even for guys who were competing uh, to be the starter. And, and then now just with, with different guys, it, it's, it's a different issue. Uh, there are a lot of unknowns when it comes to a player that I've never seen throw in person. You know, I've seen video of Philip throw, but I've never seen him throw in person. And uh, coaching in the NFL, I learned a long time ago that, that it's critical to see a guy throw in person to evaluate him. Just how does that ball come out of his hand? And, and so there are a lot of unknowns in that area. There are a lot of things I know now much better than I have for the two other years that I've sat before you. I mean, that's what it would be with Michael and David, not only in the, in the game reps that they've had, but then going through the spring with them and just learning them uh, as uh, what kind of people they are, what kind of learners they are. Um, I think after you work with a guy for so long, just like in any, any area, you have a student and you, and you can interact with them, a phone call, you, you can get so much out of their feedback. And so I, I feel very confident. I have great faith in, in the kind of summer that those two guys had just based on, on knowing them. And so, so there's so much more that I know this year. Of course, all the questions are about the one thing I don't know. But, but uh, we'll, I'll spend, I've spent a lot of time so far, grueling time, trying to get the reps just right. But then I just have to leave it open after a certain amount because then as, as we evaluate where, where they are, um, we'll just proceed in that direction. I remember sitting here last year saying, well, we'll just let it play out on the field. It's easy to say that. Sometimes it's hard. Um, I, f I feel great about the two guys that, that return for us and, and knowing what I know about them. Uh, I feel excited about what I've learned of Philip Sims. 
and I feel great about both of our incoming freshman quarterbacks. Of course, you, you all know Grayson because he was here in the spring, and Matt Johns joins us this summer. And we, we spent a lot of time recruiting those guys and felt like they were the right guys to come and continue to be the future of the quarterback position here, and I think we're in good shape. Well, the, I'll, I'll tell you, the, the first time I, I was exposed to him, we were recruiting a wide receiver from his high school. So I had literally been here for less than a month when I watched the video of a wide receiver, and I asked the coach who recruits there, who is that quarterback? And literally, I mean, honestly, I had no idea, and I hadn't been in the, the, the high school recruiting scene for the state of Virginia, so I had no idea who anyone was. But that was my honestly my question. So that was my first exposure to him. It, it kind of stood out on high school video. Um, I, my judge, I, I have friends at the University of Alabama who coach there, so I've, I've also had feedback from them. Um, and then uh, as far as, as his mechanics and such, I think you got to see him in person. I could make a whole bunch of, of ideas, but the first day I watch them and work with them, it'll all, it might just all change. I, I could see myself being in a situation where you want to play more than one. Um, it's not the most comfortable thing, but when it's the right thing for your team, you have to do it. And we clearly felt uh, at times last year that we had to do it because it made us better. We felt like David had something to offer that had to play. We felt like uh, not only would, would uh, it, it help us produce offensively, but it would, uh, it would help develop him as a player. And, and if you remember, at the end of the 2010 season, we played Michael Rocco in games, in the first half of the games at the end of the year to help him develop as a player. So I think you have to handle it on a case-by-case -case basis. I, I don't know what will happen. I don't have an opinion today because I don't have to, so I'll just let it, I'll just let it play. I mean, I, it, it's hard enough when you have to decide. <clears throat> when you don't have to decide yet, just make a great plan uh, of how you're going to get there and then evaluate as you go. I think every year you have to evaluate who you have on your team. And constantly, not only as a year, but week to week, we really spend a lot of time evaluating what is best for us to do. And some games you're going to go in and, and – and uh, you're going to win 10 to 9. In some games, you might have to win 35, 31. I mean, there, there are all different ways to do it. But as we look at this year, I feel like we have more players that we know can contribute with the ball in their hand than we've had the last two years. Some of them you've seen on video, so if, if you made uh, on game day, so if you made a list, you know, you, you'll have a longer list this year of guys you've actually seen carry the ball. A number of running backs, receivers. We've got a bunch of tight ends who've played for us now who are back. Uh, so, so some of them, you know, and some of them we know because we've seen them do it on the practice field over and over. As a staff, we say, this guy's got to play. So um, as we look at how do you score more points, I mean, that's the essence of offense until the end of the game when you do what you have to do to win, whether it's kneeling on the ball or running the clock out. You just keep scoring until it's time to, to do otherwise with the clock. Uh, the more guys that, you, that can help you, I think the better chances you have. The onus comes on the coaches now on how do you get all those guys in the right situation. So I feel a real responsibility to make sure the ball gets in certain guys' hands a number of times. If if we uh, are able to grasp uh, concepts of either you know man-to-man uh, -man, uh, zone pressures, then now I, I think that will allow us to dial up you know uh, schemes that would give us an advantage to whatever the strengths of the offense are. You know, today what you what, what it's hard to do is, is say, well, we're going to be this. And, you know, we're going to be pressure all the time. Well, you, you get up, you know, you get with a, a four wide outs or a team that throws the football and, and they have – everybody knows what they're doing on offense. And, and it's, it's uh, you know, it's difficult. You have to be able to adjust and improvise. And that's what you have to do. Uh, but what we have to do, I believe, honestly, is just grasp who we are, the concepts we're trying to teach, like we did last year, um, and like we struggled to do the year before. And, uh, and then we have to try to match our scheme with the strength of, of offenses.
because we really didn't do anything different last year than we did the year before. Uh, and that's what we, we have to do, I think. This year I can tell you that you, know, you sit in your office and as you're leaving, Trey Nicholson, Brandon Phelps, uh, Daquan Hosky, Anthony Harris, all those young characters came in and, and were watching, uh, watching film. And, and, and when you get to know them, you get to recruit them a little bit, you know, you, you, what you say, and I don't know if it's a correct analogy, but, you know, you, 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 you know you'd walk down a dark alley with those guys any day. And uh, there's a couple of guys in here that don't like me to say, you get down on your hands and knees and pray to bring them home, that you meet the family, that your daughter brings them to meet the family someday, or you'd be proud to call them your sons, but it's exactly the truth. Great, high quality, terrific guys. And, uh, you know, to name, you know, without naming like Rio Walker and Mason Thomas and Darius Lee, it's not fair. But so what I'm just saying is that right now we've got a lot of real good, young, eager players that that want to succeed, that have watched guys in front of them succeed. So that's got to be a difference. And uh, just work as hard as we can with them. And, but it all goes back to basic fundamentals. And as long as they have that, then we, we'll get them in the right spot. Well, throughout the offseason, uh, and, and there's no secret that Steve Greer and Leroy Reynolds have played you know, in a few games here and, uh, and should be leaders for our defense, uh, they have kind of grabbed those young secondary guys and kind of pulled them along. And so as we get into the course of the season, hopefully the communication between both ends will be such that, you know, we're on the same page. You know, we understand, you know, you got some young guys. And so we'll see. We had, we had solid plans in and, you know, we had a lot of young kids out there, but you know, sometimes the team, you know, every year you're not going to be able to be able to create that many trick plays on special teams. The other uh, teams got projectors as well. So, you know, we had a few here and there. And, you know, sometimes you execute them, sometimes you don't. You know, two years ago we just, I mean, our kids executed every last one on perfect and the situation just happened right. You know, last year, you know, just a few times they caught us a little bit. But, you know, obviously the block punts at the bowl game, block punt against uh, Idaho, stuff that we got to fix, I think um, – you know, it ain't no glaring uh, flaws within what we're doing. It's just we just got to do better, me as a coach, and, and you know, we got to get guys that can perform at the positions. But last year, you know, we used a lot of young kids, but th those young kids on offense and defense helped us win games. We won eight games last year from four the year before, you know, but you put them out there on special teams, it's a totally different, it's a totally different beast. I mean, it's open field. I mean, it's full speed sprinting. You know, there's nowhere to hide. So, you know, a, lot, a couple of them struggled a little bit, but, you know, hopefully we we're gonna reap the benefits from having them all out there last year. You know, you know everybody was on my you know my my hind part. They were shaving me down because I had Dominic Terrell back there returning punts. But you know, I just remember being a young player, and George Wells stuck me out on the field. And yeah, I got burnt you know a few times, and you know I think my career turned out all right. So you know, hopefully, you know I didn't want to crush the kid's spirits by saying, man, you know he dropped one punt. Oh Lord, the, the sky falling. You know, so you just try to you know on the job training for the kid. You know, we didn't have Ain't like we had uh, Devin Hester standing on the sideline, you know, just trying to get, you know, so, hey, we was trying to get something happening, and I think the kid did a great job, and, you know, hopefully we'll reap the benefits this year from all those young kids playing on special teams for us. I don't us. remember George Wells well sticking you back there returning punts. He had me, one game he had me return kicks. They just didn't kick it to me. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs>